Is there anything on the island, like maybe in Phuket Town, that's extremely historic or um, that that stands out for you? Whether that's been built by the Dutch, Portuguese, the British, or even ancient <coughs> Chinese, that you you know probably a hidden gem on the island that people wouldn't be aware of what it represents. I no, not really, because um, until Prior Rashida started building these old houses or Phuket Town formed, which copied. Penang, right? And kind of Malacca, I find, as well. Yeah, well, right? well, it was, you know, they call it Sino-Portuguese. It's actually Sino-Hampshire um, because when they first settled Singapore... Sino-Hampshire, what is Hampshire that? Hampshire, as in England, because okay. um, what's his name? Raffles, mm -hmm. who ran Singapore, was from Hampshire. Gotcha. And he set out that all shop houses, you know, the Chinese can move in. You get a five-meter frontage. You were taxed on your frontage, right? Yeah. And you had to put a walking street with a bit of covered. I wish, like the French had, you know, you, he made them plant trees too. The town would be a lot cooler. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why these shop houses are long. They go way back, right? Because you only got tax on how wide your shop was. And so the Chinese used their Chinese roofing tiles. Kind of, kind of even like this condo. It's like a shop house. Yeah, well, it was built as yeah. shop houses. That's a tradition. Uh, you know, you, they're five meters wide, and if you can make them longer, that's better. But you. Most people wanted their shop frontage, and that's what they paid tax on. So when the British settled Penang in 1786, all the Chinese came to settle there because the British bought, brought um, stability. Because otherwise, if you were Chinese, let's say you wanted to go to Mine Tin and you were on well, anywhere, right? If you were here in Surin Beach and you set up a tin mine, um, the pirates would soon hear about it, and the Malays were all pirates. Um, they lived on their boats. They fought. They were great seamen. They would get five or six boats together, come around here, capture you. If you didn't run away, enslave you, sell you somewhere further down the coast as a slave, and well, they, they wouldn't do the tin mining. It was too much work, right? So what, they were so, just going to get slaves? Yeah, they collected people. And oh, just because they know. That, okay, I got it. And they might catch a tin as well that you'd mined the last three weeks and then shipped yeah. off. And so if you tried to go on a boat and move your tin, they'd intercept the boat. So all commerce was being smashed by piracy here. So there was not really much commerce other than done by some Indians. And the Europeans came, the pirates didn't go after them because they had cannons with grape shot and stuff. So when the Europeans came, there was more commerce going on. And they were doing a lot of, they were basically selling guns and selling mercenaries and selling guns so that these kings, kings, but the king of Burma could have cannons to fight the king of Siam who wanted cannons and he'd want Portuguese mercenaries because, or, or, you know, a lot of Turkish mercenaries uh, were coming out because uh, they would be, they would actually go and kill people and it was, they were good fighters generally. Mm -hmm. And then the Dutch came and they were ruthless, right? I mean, they said, we want to control all trade. So there was a lot of, there was a big battle in Patong where they wiped out the Dutch and it was quite ungovernable for, for most of the Europeans here. Because the local people are very tough here. How long did that take for stability to arrive here? Well, it really only arrived when the British got steamships, which was the 1830s. Prior to that, they took Penang. And remember, the, the funny thing about Phuket, you say it wasn't... A, the whole of the Bay of Bengal was a British lake. You start in Sri Lanka, all the way up through India, Burma, all the way down Burma, all the way through Malaysia to Singapore. The only bit that isn't, that wasn't British, was Phuket Island and down to Renong, right? Why is that? That's another podcast. But okay. look, but basically, I mean, like, they, yeah, they, basically, when they first came to capture Phuket, um, they the American War of Independence started, right? And so they they pulled them back. They were loading the troops on board. They said, no, we're going to war with France. And that forget chasing Phuket. We need to fight the French. Um, on several occasions, up until the end of the Second World War, the British were going to take Phuket. But the Americans stopped them. They said, um, no, 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 enough. Because then the Americans took over this country after the Second World War. Yep. I mean, sort of politically. Briefly, though. I mean, well, yeah. I mean, yeah, till the 60s, 70s. This is know, when they're, they, they're they landing in Pattaya. And, yeah, they... Yeah. Um, because the America, the British were exhausted after the first war, and they'd they'd been humiliated in Asia by the Japanese, so mm. so they um, they couldn't control it. Like 